special 10 round bout in the lightweight division. The referee for this contest will be Marty Dankin. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks with white trim, weighing in at 132 and one half pounds. He comes to us from Ensenada, Baja California, Mexico, with a professional record of 41, 16 and one, 37 of those 41 victories by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, Andre Carita Sandoval. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the multicolored trunks with a big M on the front, weighing in at 136 pounds. From Mexicali, Mexico, a professional record of 50 victories, 34 by KO. Only six defeats with four draws. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the former featherweight champion of the world, Jorge Marromero Pai. Fighters have been introduced in a moment. Uh, Denkin, the referee, will have a final comment with them. I would imagine he's over in the corner. Talking now to uh, one of the doctors, huh? attendants here at ringside. And now Dakin ready to talk to the two fighters. I don't know if Sandoval wants to come out. I don't think Sandoval wants to talk. That's fine. Well, they're looking for the mouthpiece. They're going to rinse it off. You know, when you go out for the instructions, you don't need your mouthpiece. As gonna, I told you earlier, you're not going to get hit. We would bring you up to date on Scotty Olson. His hand is broken. His right hand is broken. When it happened, I don't know. Uh, conceivably, the shot that put uh, Roman down in the third round, it might have been in the sixth round. At any rate, from that point on, Olson was a one-handed fighter. I still thought he won the fight, but my opinion is just my opinion. All right, Maromero. What a flashy set of uh, trunks he's almost got on. Yeah, those trunks are great, too, because sometimes they reflect the light, the television lights, and it goes up in your opponent's eyes. You blind him momentarily. Then you can sock him. Sandoval, taller at 5'9". He's got a three-inch advantage there. They're both in within the lightweight limits, although Sandoval is about three pounds lighter or was at the weigh-in. Maromero Paez has fought for the title. Little bolo punch there just to get the crowd excited. Yeah, and the clowning antics of him are terrific. He uses those and he works the crowd to help that get that crowd to help him win these fights. And it's interesting well, charisma. that nope. Paez is on this card tonight for several standpoints. Number one, of course, the forum would like to see him do well. I'd like to match him for another title shot. Bear in mind also that he is the one common denominator between the two lightweights that will be fighting for the title, Pendleton and Roala. Pendleton knocked Paez down twice en route to a 10-round decision. Ruales knocked him down twice and knocked him out with a 10th round pin. Bloodied his nose, bloodied his mouth, cut him over the right eye. Now, those who, who favor Paez say that he was not in shape, but had to lose too many pounds coming into the Ruelas fight. and might have taken Ruelas a bit lightly, although I don't know how you take a guy that uh, has got 37 at the time uh, victories uh, lightly, but nonetheless he may have. Be that as it may, he was knocked down twice and knocked out by Ruelas. Pretty busy first round for Sandoval. What did Fernando Paramo say? The uh, name carved into the haircut of uh, Paez is the, one of the candidates for the office of president of Mexico in the next election. Marty Denkin uh, checking. The two guys had a little head banging session there. Sometimes Maromero is dressed like a headbanger. <laughs> He's amazing. Yeah, he is amazing. How, how do you, you know, how do you dream up these different costumes every time? Well, he's a bright, and, innovative guy. Yeah. I tell you, he spends a lot of money on those costumes oh, yeah. as well. And there it's oh. all. Good left hand sends Sandoval into the ropes and trying to hang on. Yeah. Oh, no, none of those annex is thinking. But I think he'll put up yeah. with that. Sandoval, I mean, oh! oh. And by Sandoval. Oh. He fake it. He was on his toes, bouncing around as though he'd been nailed, but I don't think so. Well, Sandoval is smart. He will use more of those. You know, Paez has these traditional fighters figure out, figured out. Those good fighters with a good amateur background, they come in and they throw the straight punches and 
They're basic boxers, the one, two, three, but the fighters that are wild, like Sandoval was right there with that right hand that comes from the outside, you don't know where it's coming from. That's where the that's bell, the, the end of round number one. Let's go back into the locker room of Scotty Olsen. Fernando Paramo is there. Bring us up to date on the broken hand. Scotty, tell us about the hand. What happened? Ooh, I, hurt real bad. Uh, I dropped him, and I think it was either the shot before I dropped him or the round after that I, I broke it. I couldn't even close my hand, and I hit him with it a couple rounds later. Oh, it was so sore. Tell us about the decision. Do you believe it was fair? <laughs> no, I don't. I, I, uh, uh, what happened to, what happened to uh, Scotty Olsen maybe being like Julio Cesar Chavez? I, I, I thought I should have at least uh, had a draw on that one. I, I fought real hard. I thought I, I boxed real nice with one hand. It's best as a, 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 a puncher can box with one hand. What round did you break the hand? Is that in the third? Uh, I think I broke it about the third, fourth. I am not sure. Thank you very much, Scotty. All right. Thank you very much. Bye -bye Back to you. Well, such are the uh, fruits of his labor tonight. A broken hand and a split decision loss to Jorge Luis Ramon and perhaps a uh, title fight now thrown into the closet for a while. Huh? A split hand and a split decision. Ouch. I don't know which one hurts more. Yep. He uh, was not without uh, well he certainly wouldn't fool anybody on what's my line. Uh, Scotty Olsen he showed the effects of a grueling 10 round go with Roman that right eye was just about slammed shut and of course Ramon uh, has a cut down the outside of his left eye that bled rather profusely oh, in the yeah. closing rounds, and he was knocked down in the third round. So oh, maybe you, Olsen, uh, looking at Olsen and all things considered, oh, maybe a draw was what he deserved. Certainly you not take, a loss. You take a beating inside those ropes. Not only where you get hit, but also up and down your, your body when you get hit in the body. Your ribs the next day are sore. It hurts to take a deep breath. Your face hurts. That eye is going to be swelled up from Scotty. His hand's going to hurt. He'll wake up tomorrow and go, oh, what did I do? Then the next day it'll be worse, and then it'll get better. Good left hook blocked by Sandoval. Sandoval's tall, lanky. He could be a cutie, but he loves to stay on the inside and slug it out. Baez uh, chops at him with that right hand, has taken a couple of uppercuts. If you go back over the voting, the judges' cards, two judges had it 95 94 Roman, and the other judge had it 97 92 in favor of Olsen. Remember, Olsen had a 10 8 round, and we quite frankly thought that Olsen won about six, maybe even seven of the 10 rounds. Oh, yeah. One of them being a two point round, and I think. The judges didn't see it that way. I had a 97-93 scored for Scotty. Uh, my score don't count, as you said. No, earlier. mine doesn't. Either. <laughs> my opinion is sometimes. I was, I was going to say no. Busy right hand for Paez. That uppercut. Sandoval is not uh, quiet out there either. He's throwing a lot of punches. Pretty good punches this round from Sandoval. Sandoval came into this ring bone dry. Andres did not have that glow, that sweat on him. When you come into a ring like that, you're cold. And it usually takes you a few rounds to get going. If you get your fighter good and warmed up in the back, he'll start faster. You gotta do a little shadow boxing in the line. That's right. That's, that is so, so true. Break your sweat, breaking in yep. about the middle of the third round is, uh, That's right. if dangerous. you're still on your feet. Really dangerous to do. Most fighters break theirs on the stretcher going back. By end. That's what we need to buy end. Yeah, he's, he's allowing for Sandoval to get off too many shots. I'll tell you, Paez takes a good shot, though. Pendleton hit him a couple of pretty good wraps and dropped him. Bounced right back up. Lincoln steps between them as the round comes to a close and a good round. And now if you look into Paez's corner, you'll see the Czech Bodak, perhaps the best cut man in the business, is wearing the clown's nose if he, he leans in that Jorge had when he came into the ring. Here's a look at it. Good action. I think this is the overhand right. Kaboom, it is. Right on the eyebrow. The eyes have it. Sandoval comes back, but a little bit of holding behind the head from Paez. 
But he scores. I think he just raised the glove up enough when he threw the punch that he wasn't going to get called on it. Paez is very stoic faced in uh, the corner, but the only excitement he shows visually is when one of the pretty ring girls walks by. Then Paez, uh, his eyes light up. Pretty serious about this effort here tonight. He looks to be very fit and good shape. Weighed in at 136 or announced as 136. I think we've uh, brought you up to date and chronicled the fact that uh, he's only 5'6", and fighting at 135 pounds uh, is not that easy for a guy that tall. I mean, take uh, Gennaro Hernandez at 130, is 5'11", maybe the tallest light uh, junior, lightweight. junior lightweight in the history of the game. Yeah, very tall. Most of the lightweights and junior lightweights they're about 5'7", five, 5'8", five, somewhere around in there. To be 5'9", in, in the lightweight division, is a tall, considered a tall lightweight. Well, Sandoval is that. He is 5'9", weighs 132 and a half. He's in the red trunks, and of course, Maromero in the colorful garb. Yeah, and, and this is, we're talking about the size of these two fighters. This is how the breakdown of a fighter can lead to your advantage. Jorge Paez has a 72-inch reach as a lightweight or a junior lightweight or a featherweight where he won his title. That is an extremely long reach. He can use that on the inside, uh, on the inside and on the outside. And he's not using it now. Sandoval, by comparison, has a 70-inch reach. He is the taller of the two. Left hand by Paez appeared to be somewhere near his hometown of Mexicali. A little bit low. Sandoval certainly is not overawed by uh, no. Maromero Paez. No, and he's getting to work. Paez wants to keep the pressure on, wants to make him work, not get caught with anything, let him throw his stuff. It's still early in this fight. Paez is the veteran. Still to come, of course, on this magnificent card. War by the shore is Freddie Pendleton in the second title defense of the IBF lightweight crown that he holds. Rafael Ruelas will be trying to knock it off his head. And of course, later, the bout between Michael Carbohal, the IBF and WBC light flyweight champion against the man who once was and wants to be again, Humberto Gonzalez. His favorite punch is the overhand right, and Paez throws that nicely. He has clocked Sandoval a number of times with it, and watch, he puts his body into it well. Some of his, this is where the aerobics, the aerobic exercises that he did as a acrobat helped him. He learned to throw the upper body with it. There it is again. That's the punch that's eventually going to knock out Sandoval. If I Paez seemed to like out. what he had done. He goes back to yeah. his corner with a bit of a smile, and look what I just did. Coming up, Pendleton and Ruelas. And let's uh, take a little look at uh, Pendleton, the champion. Fernando Paramo is with him. Fernando, if you will. Thank you, Tom. This, is the, the, this fight was signed. You have shown no respect at all for Ruelas. Do I you feel not. that enough? I have not. No respect. Why should I have respect? I'm the champion. He respect me. Now, if he ever, in a million years, which will never happen, win a world title, hey, then I'll respect him. But I'll be in another division as another champion. You said that no Mexican fighter will beat you. Well, I, don't, I ain't really mean Mexican. I mean, they jumped on me about the Mexican fighters at that point in time, but there's no fighter in the world that can beat me at that. My weight limit, none of them. I don't give none of them a chance to beat me. Thank you very much. Back to you, Tom. All right, the outspoken, brash, maybe even cocky. Sugar Ray Leonard in attendance at ringside. The brash, maybe even overly cocky, Freddie Pendleton. Fearless Freddie, he's called. There's a man who made all the great news, of course, in basketball. He became... The greatest guard to ever play the game at 6'8", Irvin Magic Johnson. It'll be interesting, that pendleton Ruelas fight. Ruelas is very soft-spoken. He would never say the things that Pendleton does. But I tell you, Fearless Freddy is, doesn't take a backseat to anybody. He comes to fight. And, uh, you know, how can you confuse a guy that has a record, maybe 18, 19 losses? I mean, he spent a lot of years toiling in almost anonymity and defeat. Well, now he's the champ. He's had 18 losses, and in those 18 losses, he was frustrated many times. He wanted to quit, but he couldn't quit. He, he fell in love with the sport of boxing, and finally, he said one day, he told his family when he was young and trying to get started in the boxing business, trying to help support them, too. He told them, one day, I will be champion. 
and he Baez is. is just a second away from holding and whacking. <laughs> but you know, it's something else, too. He, he told me, Pendleton said, I'm trying to get Ruelas out of his game. I want him to rush me tonight. I want him to come at me where I can step back or sidestep and then nail him. But well, when they get in the ring, you're going to see that they are approximately the same size. When he beat Paez, he was obviously a few inches taller than Paez, who's only 5'6". And Ruelas, when he fought Paez, came right across the ring in the first round. He had barely gotten off the stool when Morales knocked Paez right in the back of his lap. And the look of sheer surprise on the face of Maromero was unbelievable. Then, of course, he was knocked down later in the 10th round KO when he failed to come out. But Ruelas really gave him a beating. And that is the surprise that yeah. you have when you go down. You think, what am I doing down here? The first thing that you know is you're down. You don't feel the punch. Good combination from Paez, but it's Sandoval comes back. punches, Sean, they are not, they're just slap shots. Anymore. But Sandoval is trying. You know, you got to give him credit, because he is, he is trying. He's getting hit. He doesn't have the best chin in the world, a lot of people say, but he is trying to throw punches. Paez is very good with that uppercut. Oh, yeah. Either hand, left or right. Very good, loose, fluid. And, you know, he gives you the impression and I'm sure it's evident to Sandoval. Oh, oh, well, he right. gave Sandoval an impression of that right. Yeah. That uh, just keep standing there because I'm going to walk right over right. and just belt you right. one and you're going to hurt. Right. And again, remember me talking to, at first about it appearing that Paya is not at all concerned about fighting Sandoval coming into this ring. Now he's fighting him on the inside. Not at all concerned about the punches of, of Sandoval. Paez is outstanding at pulling away to take the power out of your punches. He just pulls away just enough to take the power out of it. Oops. Low blow. Paez yeah. knows it. Yeah. Taking a point away from Paez. Taking a point away. Yeah. And this crowd does not like that. Now, underneath their trunks, these men are wearing foul-proof protectors, which will protect you where you get hit, however, occasionally when they get full of sweat and they get old, they don't fit and they slide around and that, that can smart. All things uh, considered, I, I think that's the toughest place to try to hurt a fighter as compared with the rest of the anatomy that's available to get hit. I mean, hit him right in his nose and break his nose, it's got to hurt and smart and be a lot bloodier than a shot to the protector. That's the end of round number four. I don't know. I think I'd rather be hitting the nose. You'd rather be hitting the nose, would you? I don't know about that. I've been hit a lot. Come on. 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 Acuérdate, vamos derecha y open largo. Open largo con los open y derecha, muy bonito. Pero tú estás dejando ir con un solo golpe. The corner of Paez, Hector Gill, Alex Shearer, Oscar Zarcia. Good work from Matamero. Very elusive. See, Matamero is all over the place, too. The hands are down. He has no, he has, uh, no protection, but he has such fluid movement. He makes it look easy. He makes the sport look, e looks, look easy and goes about it the right way. He doesn't get up tight. He doesn't let the people that push him around. Sandy Koufax made pitching look easy. Yep. Ted Williams made hitting look easy. And Mickey Mantle made the game look easy. People with the great skills do that. Referee took a point away. Uh, no, I just think Marty Dankin might be overly cautious about Paez because his antics in the ring from time to time have, uh, well, they please the crowd and he has, his fans are legion. He may have a kind of a demeaning attitude for the other fight. Paez gets shoved to the canvas. Take down. the Wrestling Federation. Then the ball shoves him down. Yeah, but, but Paez also fighting his time. You know, he knows he's he kind of not for the knockdown. Take your time. Give a little breath. Well, Paez's uh, style in the ring leads to kind of a roughhouse type of fight. A lot of ring generalship from him. But he should have 50 wins, 6 losses, 4 draws, 34 KOs. a champion of the world. A lot of experience. But he's been like this for a long time. He doesn't get up tight. He doesn't get worried about fights. He doesn't sometimes come into a fight with a fight plan. And he has fun out there. Look at him. He is having fun. He loves what he's doing. He loves being in front of the crowd. He loves showboating. Well, 
Crawford is a real professional fighter. There's no question about yeah. that. Yeah, he's good. He backs it up, too. That's, that's the thing about him. He, he can really fight. Defensively, he's better than people suspect. Yeah. Well, you can't hit him with a handful of salt. No. Great he, movement. Uh, very elusive. He's waving that right hand at Sandoval and then pops him with the left. Well, you know. Great balance. Real magician's trick. Yeah. Uh, okay. Changing your yeah. focus. And having fun. Catches Boom. Sandoval in the corner and drops a right hand on him. Wasn't fun to Sandoval. There's a good left hook from Sandoval. Sandoval's had his moments. He's He's still losing. I've, I've got him losing every round, but he's still trying. Still throwing the punches, hanging in there. Sandoval showing a lot of nose. Yeah, uh, but look at these punches from Sandoval. He gets no extension on his shots whatsoever. Every punch from him is a hook. 90% of the power of the punch is right on the end. That final snap, when you lock your elbow, when you twist your wrist, when you clinch your fist, when you put your hip into the shot, when you put your shoulder into the shot, when you bend your knee and push with that toe, that's where the power comes in the, in the fight, in the punch. He doesn't have that. Coming to the close of round number four, it's scheduled for 10. A slow-paced uh, sort of a get-together with the Paez and Andre Sandoval. Now then, coming up, of course, Freddie Pendleton defends his IBF lightweight title against Rafael Ruelas, and there may be a bit of a controversy brewing backstage, so to speak. Our man Fernando Paramo is there. What is it, Fernando? Well, there was a lot of yelling and screaming between uh, Joe Goodson, one of the managers for Rafael Ruelas, and uh, people with the commission. Let's tell us about it, Joe. No, that's the way I talk normally, Fernando. <laughs> no, I don't think you talk normally. Apparently, there was some problems with the, uh, with the measurement of the tape or the, the way they were set up. No, it was just uh, I put a piece of tape on and they wanted me to take it off and I said put it over my tape that I already put on and there seemed to be a big deal about tape on the glove. I didn't see anybody win or lose a fight because of tape, but anyway, we compromised. They got theirs on and I got mine on. Thank you very much. Raphael's been a long time, you get it. Oh yeah, you know, it's been a long time. I'm ready for this, you know, it's been five years. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Fernando. And while we were settling the issue of the glove and the tape, we have a broken nose for Andre Sandoval, and he is not going to come out for the fifth round, and so Jorge Maravero Paez has recorded another victory, and it will be his 34th KO in a brilliant career. And uh, he won't be out, Sandoval won't, for the fifth round, suffering a broken nose. He was bleeding from the nose, as I told you. But it didn't seem to be that uh, heavy a flow, which generally you get with a, a broken nose, uh, Sean. Well, backflipping is not a mineral play. Is. Yes, when, when your nose is bleeding, bleeding, it is broke. And all that's in your nose is cartilage. So what actually happens is you break the cartilage. You don't really break a bone. Maramero Paez, nice, loose. Look at him. He's, uh, he's still having fun. Loves being on this stage called the ring. Uh oh fighting with somebody or slapping. No, he slap just uh, took a playful yeah. poke at a he, cameraman who's here all the time. Yep. And uh, he tossed one of his gloves uh, into the crowd to uh, one of his fans. And uh, I, I think his cornermen are a little upset because uh, and now the, the doctor is telling him don't do that. Look at Chuck Bodak there with, yeah. the, with the red nose. Chuck is a story of himself. <laughs> all right. Michael Buffer has the official call. Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, physician at ringside, Dr. Robert Karn, has found out that the fighter fighting out of the red corner, Andres Sandoval, has suffered a broken nose and other lacerations. The bout has to be stopped. Referee Marty Denkin calls a halt at the end of five rounds. The winner by TKO, victory number 51, for the former featherweight champion of the world, Jorge Moromero End of the books is a fourth round KO as uh, Sandoval cannot come out to answer the bell for round number five due to a broken nose and the clown prince of boxing celebrates still another victory. It might not have been as uh, memorable an occasion as some of his other fights, but he was impressive nonetheless, and I'm sure Sandoval will tell you that he was impressed. Showing some of his nose and ac acrobatic talents. Yeah, he's a clown, you know. He worked in the family circus and still may from time to time. And he could very easily uh, be doing it uh, when his uh, body...